Hey what guys it's Fish here and welcome back. So over the past couple of days you guys have been deciding on what scenario and what faction you want me to play as and it's been really awesome to see all you guys voting and the enthusiasm you're giving for this series. Um, yeah as someone who's making content it's really nice to see people people looking forward to a series and I really do appreciate it and I hope I can deliver on a good let's play and you guys keep on watching throughout the series. So the winner of the scenario vote was A Clash of Kings. Um, this is basically for those of you who don't know, which uh, I assume is quite a few of you if you're watching this, is basically Rob Stark is going to take revenge for um, the Lannisters murdering his father and he's at war and he's going for independent uh, independence and he wants to be known as the Independent North, the King in the North. Um, and for many of you who saw my previous Let's Play, I was Rob Stark, um, we had a good time playing as him. Um, so yeah, the Lannisters are on the throw, Joffrey is currently in King's Landing, ruling as King. Stannis is trying to take back the throne because obviously he's the rightful heir by blood um, and Renly's fighting Stannis because he thinks he should be king with a reach backing them. Dawn are just chilling not really giving a fuck like Dawn do uh, which is awesome and the Vale are not getting involved and I'm not, I think I said yeah Balon is just kind of chilling and uh, proclaiming independence and saying he is the Iron Islands are once in, uh, once again independent. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the scenario wrapped up in a big ball. Obviously, it's a lot more complicated than I just said, but that's pretty much what's going on. Oh, and obviously, the Westerland, which is the Lannisters, is supporting the crown. Um, but yeah, so the faction you guys decided uh, were the Iron Islands. So you guys want me to play as Balon Greyjoy, which is awesome. This was my personal choice. I love the Greyjoys. Um, I feel like... Their whole culture of just respecting strength and going on reeves and raids and stuff is just really awesome. And yeah, I really, really do enjoy playing as the Greyjoys. And yeah, I'm excited to get underway. But um, before I do go ahead and start, I just w quickly want to say that the Bleeding Years did come in a really close second. So what I'm going to be doing after I finish this let's play, which will hopefully be a while till I finish this. But when I do finally do, uh, finish this let's play, what I'm going to be doing is hopefully I'll be doing a Bleeding Years campaign which is for those of you who don't know which is before Aegon came over um, and all the other kings are just independent and just chilling what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting off as a single province count I'm not sure where yet or because it'll be a long way down the line but I'm going to start off as a custom character as a single province count and I will try and take over the whole of Westeros and do what Aegon did but without, dragon, dr without dragons I might even be a giant, because giants are fucking cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much um, all in the future. I did not mean to click back, so it's going to have to wait a couple seconds whilst Crusader Kings does its thing. And let's jump back in. Okay, cool. So let's go to A Clash of Kings and get this underway. I'm also going to go ahead and be talking um, a little bit of history in this episode about the Greyjoys. So those of you who don't really haven't read the books and don't know a lot about the, uh, the lore previously to Game of Thrones, uh, the first book, then, you know, I'll just fill in a bit of information for you guys. It may be a bit wrong because, you know, trying to do two things at once uh, sometimes gets me a little bit confused. So I will be talking about the Greyjoy Rebellion because uh, it kind of weaves in nicely to why Theon is our only heir. Um, so yeah, let's just get this event done first. So basically this is Stannis uh, Baratheon uh, proclaiming that the Lannister children are incest or spawns of incest and are not the true king and he is the true king. Um, I will go ahead and uh, acknowledge that because I don't give a fuck about Lannisters. Um, we do not sow and all. Uh, so yeah, quickly I'll quickly talk about the Greyjoy Rebellion, which is a playable event in the game. So basically, the Greyjoy Rebellion is just after Robert Baratheon took the took the throne and proclaimed himself as king and beat the um, beat the Targaryens. He then uh, Balon then decided that it'd be good a good time for him to proclaim independence for the Iron Islands and go back to the old ways. Because he thought a lot of the other houses um, around around Westeros still called him a usurper, uh, Robert a usurper, and didn't he didn't think that they would back him up. But he was wrong, and he, they did all back him up, and Stannis led the fleet to destroy the Iron Islands fleet. And then they besieged Pike um, and several other places on the Iron Islands, and they pretty much got wrecked by the by the armies of Westeros, mainly because they lost their fleet. Their fleet were mainly meant for lightning raids to get in and out, and Stannis tricked them into fighting, and they just got wrecked, pretty much. Uh, they did manage to kill the Westerlands fleet, though, at Lannisport, 
However, the, when Robert managed to rally the people of Westeros, uh, they didn't really stand a chance. And he did lose two of his sons before he did bend the knee. And then Theon got sent off to be tutored by Eddard, uh, Eddard Stark in the north. So yeah, that was just a really brief description of uh, the Greyjoy Rebellion. And that just gives a little bit of explanation why you can see um, all his sons are dead. So yeah, so yeah, we still have Asha or Yara if you're a TV watcher, which is pretty good. We have a lot of strong warriors, which is really nice. But let's go ahead, let's go ahead and get started. So we have Theon, who's chilling in Winterfell at the moment. Asha is also chilling. Um, relations, we don't have any at the moment. Let's look at our vassals. So we have a few disappointing vassals at the moment who like dislike us a little bit, but we can sort that out later down the line, especially with an upcoming event. Uh, our core, again, isn't really that happy with us. Um, the Iron Islands work a lot like, if you've played default CK2, they work a lot like uh, the Vikings do. In the way they're, like, uh, in the way their relations work with men being levied, uh, people enjoy war, etc. Uh, Balon is pretty good. He's a really, he's actually got a flanking and aggressive leader, which is really nice. These two traits are nice. A few times I've played this, he's got pretty shitty uh, traits because each time these are random. So having a flanker and aggressive leader is beautiful. It means we can stick him on a flank and he'll just absolutely annihilate because he gets so much more, um, yeah, so much more combat efficiency. Oh yeah, also I've totally forgot to say they've also upgraded this mod. Uh, previously, I think it was on zero point six two. And in this version, it is 0 0.7. And they've added in a lot more dueling in battles. So your leaders will actually find out other leaders in the midst of battle and duel. And then, so it's more likely your character can die or gain better traits in battle. Which makes it a lot more interesting because before it was just like two numbers smashing each other over and over and over again. And now, you know, there's something on the line. If you put your king, who's an awful um, martial leader, on the front lines, he might actually die. And, it, yeah, they do the same with tournaments. And there's a load of other changes. I'll put the, I'll put it in the comments down below if you want to go ahead and download it. Um, yeah, feel free to. So what I'm going to be doing uh, straight off the bat is I'm going to be adopting a lifestyle. This is a really nice ambition. And it just gives an easy... It just gives a really, really easy... Uh, trait which can like I think it's like if we get a hunter trait it gives us plus two uh, martial and it's just really nice to have or a scholar which gives plus two learning which is just really nice so let's go ahead and sort our council out um, we'll obviously oversee pike um, I'm gonna leave my master at law alone for a moment and uh, my captain of the fleet is also gonna be left alone Actually, no, let's go ahead and stick him in Pike for now. I wanted to leave him alone because I wanted to go ahead and use him, obviously, to command my armies in a second. But if I if I increase the levy size right now, he can then, uh, yeah, I can then raise my men and I can take him off of this in a second. And then that way I'll have a lot more men. Um, I want to try and convert this guy because this guy isn't actually in my religion. He's faithful for seven. Even though he isn't Ironborn, so I'm kind of confused why he is. Why he is faced with a seven, but we need to convert him so he's happy with us when we go to war. Uh, decisions: we can decide upon the civil war, or we can go on a reaving. Both of them, I'm not really going to worry about at the moment, mainly because um, we're soon to go to war, so we don't really have to care about that, which is fine. Military: we we get. 8,000 men from our vassals. We can also raise 8,000 men, which is crazy. Um, we need to let our men actually replenish for a, for a little bit. Because we can raise another 3,000 men, which is crazy. I guess that's due to our... Yeah, I guess that's due to our marshal, dude. Because his marshal is so high. He gives us so many more men. Which is really nice. Uh, factions, there are none at the moment. And religion, obviously, with the old gods. Okay, Theon is unmarried. I guess it's a good idea to get him married fairly soon. I think I'm going to go ahead and get him married to someone in Dawn. Because I think the Dornish are, are, are going to be a really nice ally to have. Obviously, in the books, Theon, uh, Theon wouldn't get married to someone from Dawn. Uh, he'd get married to someone in, uh, in the Iron Islands normally. So, I feel like I'm going to go a little bit against Balon's actual personality and get, try and get him married to someone in Dawn. Um, and which will give us a strong alliance. Uh, we'll arrange a marriage between her and Theon. 
Uh, Theon isn't. Oh, it's because Theon isn't in our court yet, so we need to get him back to our court straight away before we do that. Yeah, so I'm, what I'm going to be doing as well is I'm going to be trying to role play on what I think that what I think Balon would do. Um, so I'm going to try stay in character, even though it might not be what I want to do. I'm going to try and do what uh, Balon would do. Okay, so this is the generic event you get, which pops up. Uh, Theon has come back to the Iron Islands asking us for help uh, in Rob's war, and he says that Rob will help us or allow us independence if we win. And I feel like Balon kind of ignored the fact if he did help Rob, he could then go to war with the Lannisters and become filthy rich. If he raided the whole of his coastline, uh, you can see the, the tax value, 43, 52, 31, 39. Like, this is so much money. And if you look at the, like, the north, like, look how poor it is compared. You've got, like, Bear Island, which is 22. And Winterfell, which is 52. But apart from that, it's very scarce. However, I feel like Balon would feel uh, insulted, but Rob has, like, given him the right to become a king. And as as many of them say, uh, he will pay the iron price for his crown, uh, which I feel like is what I'm going to do. I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to declare war and invade the North. What he did in the books, what he did in the TV show, um, obviously, and what I'm going to do. Because I don't need some jumped up little prick who thinks he's a king to tell me that I can become a king of the Iron Islands. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, we actually, why did you not... Why are you not on my side anymore? Why have you gone independent? That confused me a little bit. Hmm, I'm not quite sure why he did that. We'll pause it quickly. Um, as you can see, because of like the Viking, uh, the Viking mechanics, we now have plus 20. Everyone likes us plus 20 because uh, we have impressed them. Because we have decided to go to war, they like us a little bit more. We're going to let our men just replenish a little bit. Uh, I doubt the North, because the North have like no ships. So I doubt they're going to bring any men onto mainland Pike uh, or mainland Iron Islands anytime soon. And Theon has come back, so we can actually get Theon married now, uh, quickly before he does uh, does find uh, like a, someone else to marry. And this is really nice, because everyone else is a different religion, this gives Theon plus, like, just plus 10% on all his stuff, because, yeah, because he's a holy warrior, and everyone obviously isn't our religion. Title loss on succession, why would I lose, is it because... Victor is um, our heir. Hmm. Obviously, we'll elect for our son to be king of the Iron Islands because it is elective monarchy. So, obviously, we will go ahead and nominate Theon, and hopefully, our our nominators will follow. So, Mance Raider is attacking the wall. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ready the men. Um, and say I'll ride at the dawn. But I'm not actually going to help. I just want to see what, what's going on up there. Maybe I'll send some men just to get the prestige later on. But So, yeah, I am going to go ahead and help. Because I just want to see what's going on. Did Dawn did actually say they would, they would march to help the wall along with me. Unfortunately, not many people do actually go help the wall. Which is kind of silly. Not I think like Stannis should be like obligated to go do it. But oh well. Just go ahead. Oh, she actually got a marriage, which is kind of annoying. Matrilineally as well. Oh, because she is the heir, obviously, because it, by Dornish law, the females... Um, okay, they won already. Holy crap. They captured Mance Raider. And, yeah, won the wall. I guess in one, one swift battle, the old bear did it. Uh, he managed to destroy them, which is kind of cool. I don't normally see that happening uh, too often. Why have the Reach got their men levied? Are the Reach involved in this war? Ooh, yeah, the Reach actually did get involved on their side. Because Renly is now dead, he got killed uh, by the Devil Child, by the looks of it. Joffrey is still king, and then the Reach decided to back up the Westerlands. Uh, okay, cool. So let's go ahead. Have our men replenished somewhat to an extent. So let's go ahead and just raise them anyway. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be splitting my forces into two main contingents. I'm going to have uh, the Royal Army 
which is going to chill on Pike. Well, not chill on Pike. It's going to muster a Pike, and then it's going to go ahead and assault uh, assault Bear Island. And then my other army is going to go ahead and try and hold Moat Kalen from Rob Stark. Uh, I need to be a little bit, a little bit safe. Um, but hopefully Rob's too involved in this war against the Lannisters to really care about us, and we can just pillage and take what we want. Um, hopefully, anyway. Sometimes he does, he does, well, normally he does actually come up and try and defend the North, but hopefully he won't this time. We'll see how it all goes down. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to be doing, one army's going to be raiding, the other army's going to be taking what they want. Because uh, I don't want to have too many boats levied. Because obviously it is so expensive to have all the boats levied. I am going to be losing money pretty steadily now. So yeah, all our boats are meeting up. I should probably actually send... I should probably send them boats over there. Anchor these men on. New, any new decisions to do? Uh, not at the moment. We might have to ask the Iron Bank for a loan. Uh, Asher needs to get married sometime soon. Uh, anyone of interest? You're pretty good. I might try. Oh, he's already ironborn, isn't he? Um, yeah. Cool. We will marry you to someone. Uh, he won't marry much literally. I'll do it in a second, actually. Uh, these boats need to get in there so we can take all the men. Excellent news. 24 gold. That's brilliant. We need that gold pretty heavily. Oh, did my wife die of depression? Okay. Ouch. Was she already dead? No, she did just die of depression. How sad. I need a new Master of Whispers as well, which is a little bit scary. But my previous one died. He's pissed that we have his men raised too too long because he's not our religion. Everyone else will be getting a, a positive uh, thing from it. Okay, this will be my looting army. I'll let Balon lead the looting army. And these men will hold uh, Moat Kalen. Hopefully 9,000 should be enough, even if... Rob does actually come. It's probably not going to be the best. Oh, no, I did not mean to do that. Let's go ahead and anchor these men away. Uh, we'll go ahead and... F well, first, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be besieging Bear Island, I think. And then we'll... Because Bear Island has one of the highest tax uh, things we can steal. I think it's 22 and then 27 in Wolfswood or Deepwood even. And we'll just go ahead and hopefully stick to the coastline. So but Rob has to, if he wants to stop us, he has to go all the way up. And I think he, it's going to be too long a journey for him. So let's go ahead and send these dudes all the way up. And also a thing uh, for many of you, if uh, for, for a few of you who wanted me to actually uh, go ahead and help Rob, it would have been a lot harder to help Rob, mainly because the Lannisters have a lot of ships, and unfortunately there's no sh uh, ship battles in this, so I would be just like getting their men dropping on my island freely, and it'd just be pretty annoying. Actually no, it's probably a better idea to move the ships over here first. Uh, but it looks like Rob isn't faring too well. Uh, you want to come to me? Uh, no, thank you. I don't want to spend my money. I need it for the war. Okay, let's go ahead and start looting Bear Island. These ships are going over here. He's still unhappy. Oh, they have 10, 8,000 men there. That's a little bit scary. Let's go ahead and give this, yeah, this leaders straight away. Uh, so Balon's going to take hold of one of the flanks because he is a flanker. Do we have anyone who's good from the centre? With the special traits? Leading from the rear? Not really. Yeah, no one who's that great. From the centre. I mean, unyielding is quite nice to have. 
Asher is a trickster, which is again nice. Unyielding trickster. I really like the Fionze, a battlefield terrain expert, and a, and a um, and a holy warrior. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stick Fionn on the left flank because I don't want to let him out of my sights in case he goes and helps the help the Northerners. And then we will go ahead and probably have Victor in the centre. Victor's really really strong. And then on this army, uh, I'll let Asha lead the army because she is a, a very proven warrior. And then I will go ahead and let the other dudes guard the flanks. Okay, cool. That's, that seems about right. Scout and click play again. We need to be a little bit careful with this army. I'm a little bit scared of it. We will go ahead and continue to besiege this. Hopefully getting quite a bit of money for it. I want to take money to fund the war, really. How is Rob's war going? They're losing it by 57%. That is a little bit scary. Normally he puts up a better... Yeah, mate, normally he puts up a better fight than that. But Stannis is also attacking the Iron Throne now, which is nice. Um, obviously I want to charge. The, Raven, uh, the Reaving Party has been uh, uh, going around the coast, but a local patrol has spotted it. And now the Iron Boy, Ironborn fight the enemy. Uh, we will charge into battle. And is this Rick on a bear island? One mistake and he'll get it. Strike! And he is slain. Um, which is nice, and then we get more prestige because we kill him. Victory is mine that day. That's one of the things I'm saying, that a lot more dueling happens, which is kind of cool uh, with this latest update, and I really enjoy it. So by the looks of it, they're actually sending a few men to go ahead and stop me. Which what I will do is I will just go ahead and run away as soon as... As soon as I see their army, I will just run away because I don't want to fight it anytime soon. So let's move a little bit closer onto mainland. Uh, we've already taken as much as we can. 10 gold. Which isn't a lot. I should probably be actually taking war score. Because if Rob loses, it's going to be kind of yeah, kind of bad for us. Because by the looks of it, he's about to lose. He's at 85%. Hopefully Stannis can win before. How's Stannis' war going? Again, Joffrey is winning that as well. Why is everyone doing so bad against Joffrey? That's what I want to know. Okay, our, our 9,000 men should probably come off shore now and start taking some territory. We really need to take control of Moat Kalem. Uh, but we need to be careful because Rob probably has a much larger force right now. Uh, yeah, we'll just move Asher to actually take Moat Kalem. Uh, that's not good if he's hiring men to attack me. Can we have him killed? We can't. We can't invite him to court. Okay, so we need to be wary of that. We need to make sure we don't put all our eggs in one basket. And we actually have men left to fight. So that's not good. And in two years, by the looks of it, he is going to invade. So I need to be careful about that. There is also... Was this the guy we were just talking about, or was this someone else? Yeah, this is the guy we're talking about. So we have to be a little bit careful about him. I'm not sure where the hell he is, but we're going to make him pay for thinking he can take the Iron Islands from me. Um, yeah, I'm going to have him executed as soon as I can. I feel like the Reach is one of the main reasons that the North are losing and Stannis is losing. Because the Reach and this mod can just levy so many men, it's crazy. And Robert is about to lose. Yeah, Rob is about to lose as well. Which is very annoying for us. Well, it's good because it makes the North weak. But I'm pretty sure if Joffrey wins, then our war becomes invalid. Which is kind of annoying. Um... Really need to find someone for Fionn to marry as well. We need to do that fairly soon.
But we also need to watch out for this war. His host, wherever the hell his host is. We need to... We need to make sure we have a look for it. Because if it lands on Pike and starts taking Pike, that could be pretty bad for us. So let's move forward and start taking Winterfell. Um, I feel like it is... It is time to start taking Winterfell. Asher can move into Moat Kaelin and start taking that. We are actually losing prestige. I'm not quite sure why we've lost so much prestige. But yeah, so hopefully we'll start besieging Moat Kaelin. It has literally no men in, which is kind of annoying. Um, like, in this mod, it, like, it's so easy just to... Yeah, that's the thing I was annoyed about. So now Rob lost. It means that they go under the Iron Throne, um, meaning our war is now invalid. Which is really frustrating, because now, like, now it's just annoying. Like, pretty much all that was in, pretty much all that was in vain. Because um, we're besieging some lands of the king, he's a bit pissed off with us, but I don't really give a fuck. Okay, I do give a fuck, and away. Is it going to catch us? Uh, 21st, 21st. Fuck, they've got no morale though. Fuck it. Let's charge at them. Let's fight. They have more men, but they have no morale. They should get wrecked by us. And I'm going to move these 8,000 up here as well just to catch up. If the fucking Iron Throne want to fight me, they're more than welcome to. And we will absolutely slaughter them. They believe that Theon is not my son. I'm pretty sure that Theon is my son. Yeah, obviously he's not my bastard son. We have Astra coming up as well for reinforcements. These Iron Throne men are going to get absolutely fucked. They do not stand a chance. But are we still king? Yeah, we are still king. So hopefully Stannis... How is Stannis doing now? Uh, Stannis is not doing too well, but we don't give a fuck. There you go. There's his host right there. So we do need to kill this Iron, Isle, Iron, Iron Army... Iron Throne army quickly and get back so we can defend our, our homelands from this host. So I'm about to go into battle against this guy. Um, he is a knight which gives him a better chance. But he is also a poor fighter. Whereas we are a trained fighter. So hopefully we will win this duel. Prepare to die scum. One more stake and he'll get it. I strike. He tries to defend himself. It's all over now. Uh, why won't you just die? One more stake. Oh my god, why didn't you just die? And we killed him. Huzzah! We beat him. We gained prestige. And victory is mine. I really like this mod. It makes battles so much more interesting. And then hopefully Astra can reinforce this and give us the victory we deserve. So because they lost their, their general in the centre, I slew him. Uh, hopefully then um, we can wreck him. I do actually have Jamie Lannister on the left flank. Uh, hopefully I don't get into a battle with him. That would not be too good. And Asha should hopefully just arrive just in time to help the clean up. So let's go ahead and move these ships up here so we can transport our men back home. I might as well just take this because it's pretty much taken anyway. Perhaps I should claim a salt wife. Maybe I should. She'll make a fine salt wife. Okay, cool. Let's go back and we'll go ahead. We'll clean up the enemy army. We'll clean up the enemy army and then we'll go back home. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. That's quite a large number. Actually, they have no morale. No, they've just changed leaders. So let's go ahead and just kill them and then we'll go home. Because by the looks of it, the host is only uh, 4,000 men. So that really should not be a problem for us to kill. The only annoying thing is because they're now on mainland. Oh no, we can land here and attack over here. Because normally you have to actually, if they land like here, then it means you have to actually attack across the river. And it's, yeah, pretty bad. But we can just go behind them. That's absolutely fine. Astra is currently leading the men. Um, I've obviously retired to my quarters. Jamie's going to put up a big fight, but... That should be fine. Uh, we gain the trait Berserker, which is nice. What does that even give us? It gives us plus four Marshall 
Um, but a little bit less diplomacy, but our people will like us more. We captured some more people in the battle as well. We can hopefully ransom him off. Let's go back home now and sort out this, this enemy host uh, and get rid of that. So yeah, let's go ahead and sail back home after our nice reaving. We got a bit of money. We got like 29 gold, so that's always nice. Uh, the Iron Boring Longships cut through the water swiftly, and hence we have successfully pursued a merchant fleet. Uh, yeah, of course we will attack. We are Ironborn. We will attack the fleet. Hopefully it goes well. And I gained the Trait Reaver, which again gives us more martial, more people liking us. Same faith plus... Yeah, that's really nice. And we get a load of gold pies the and prestige. I love the Ironborn so much. They're just so much fun to play. Because they're just so different to the whole of Westeros. And their old ways are just really cool. They believe in strength over on, on like honour and loyalty. Which is just so much cooler. Attack another fleet. I really like these events as well. Um, yeah, I really like these events. Which pop up when you go on reavings. Okay, let's go ahead and march off. They're still besieging Volmark, but hopefully we can stop them as soon as we land. Like, they really shouldn't stand a chance. Um, I'll let Victor control the men. Actually, no, I'll give Theon his first command. Theon can control the men. I'll be on the flank. Because Theon will now need to know what it is like to fight a battle like this eventually. Uh, hello. Are they... Yeah, they're bringing on more men onto the field. Which is fine, but I'll hopefully destroy the morale a little bit. We outnumber them by 10,000 men. Like, this really should not be a problem. To kill kill his host. And have him slaughtered. So the missile phase is going on. It's just a skirmisher phase right now. But shield ball, which isn't great. we got impressive infantry assault, though. The melee phase is underway. Astro is actually getting wrecked on the left flank, which isn't good. Oh, they got reinforcements. Crap. That's not good. But we are still going to win. Just. They got a lot of reinforcements. And that was pretty scary. Let's go ahead and just rearrange these commanders. So the best commanders are actually in command. We are actually going to march them down. Because I want to get rid of his host. I mean, we can end the war now. But I want to actually just kill him. I want to capture him. Make him my prisoner. So I can execute him. And then he won't have a claim on my on my island anymore. And then we can deal with all of these. So even though they did get the hill advantage, we should be able to chase him down. I can actually de-levy these boats as well. Let's go ahead and continue to chase him down. We got a bit of gold from that, which was nice. So he wants to aid me in this. I'm not quite sure why he isn't part of my army, but oh well, it's an extra 3,000 men if I don't need it. No, she died of what? Plague. Oh, that's not good at all. That's not good. So Theon is my last living heir and he's not actually my heir. Who's my heir? Victor is. That's not that bad. Victor's really strong, but I'd much rather Theon be my heir. So we need to sort out this succession really quickly. I lose the trait. Oh, that's annoying. Oh my god, this army just won't die. But it's giving me good prestige and making people like me a lot more. Which is nice. So we didn't actually capture him, but we can enforce demands. He, oh, he's our prisoner anyway, isn't he? Yeah, of course. And then let's go ahead and de-levy the men. Uh, they fought very well, and I'm proud of each and every one of them. It's so frustrating that, he, that she died a plague. That is really frustrating. 
So now do we go under the Iron Throne? Hopefully we don't, because I want to be king. Um, I'm not quite sure why you aren't... Oh, you are part of me. Okay, obviously because you didn't want to join the war. That's obviously why. So, there... Oh, did Joffrey get incapable? He became incapable. How did he become incapable? He's a kinslayer. Who did he kill? And he's also a Lannister, obviously. Because they found out. He got a Valerian steel sword at his wedding. I still want to know who made him incapable. Did Stannis make him? Oh no, Stannis isn't... He obviously killed Stannis, I think. Um, was executed by King Joffrey. Yeah, so Stannis died, which was unfortunate. Is Rob trying to fight again? Rob is trying to fight, and he has the Stormlands on his side. And he's fighting for the Iron Throne. Long live the king. Fuck the king. Uh, oh yeah, so Joffrey died and now Tommen is in control. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, Tywin died of a natural death, which was... Which was kind of funny. So Tywin's dead. So, obviously Tyrion is in control of uh, Castle Rock. Tommen is now fighting the North still. The Vale are having succession wars. The Reach are fighting. The Dornish are fighting the North. Which is kind of surprising. And the Stormlands is pretty split up. Okay, cool. Now let's sort this out. So we need to make Theon um, inherit everything. I lose the trait Ambitious. That's so frustrating. Wow, that's annoying. We need to make Theon our heir to the Iron Islands. Like, we need to. Because he, even, he isn't even part of our dynasty. So it's kind of annoying that he's liked so much. He likes us a lot. I might just revoke elective monarchy and just say, this is what I want. Unmarried heir. I'm going to have him executed. Or I, had, ooh, I could just exile him and gain a lot of money. Holy crap, I did not see our money. We exiled into a wall. Obviously we exiled into the wall. So he should no longer be our heir. And Theon should become our heir. I'm not quite sure why Theon isn't our heir yet anyway. I'm not funding the journey. Um, yeah, I kind of sent him to the wall. So I'm actually going to give him it. But we have so much money now. So let's start improving the Iron Islands. Let's start upgrading stuff. I might even build a new castle um, on Pike. Uh, we can't actually quite afford that, so I'm actually going to go ahead and just build, start upgrading Pike and make it into an undestroyable fortress. It's going to be like the Great Harrenhal once was back in the back in the bleeding years when the Iron Islands once held the Harrenhal, which was an interesting fact to those of you who don't know. Back in the bleeding years, before Aegon came over, uh, the Greyjoys weren't actually in control of the Iron Islands. It was another house. I can't quite remember what they're called. I can picture their their sigil right now, but I can't remember what they're called. And basically what happened was they refused to kneel to Aegon because the Iron Islands do not kneel to anyone. Obviously, um, they don't kneel to anyone. So they refused and they thought that Aegon would not be able to defeat the Greyjoy, or not the Greyjoys, the Iron Islanders, because they held Harrenhal, which was at the time the best and biggest castle anyone had ever seen. It could withstand anything, pretty much, apart from Attack from the Skies. And that's when Aegon mounted his dragons and just burnt it to the ground. And he burnt the, the current ruling party of the Iron Islands, uh, or ru ru ruling house, at the time, he burnt them alive in the tower, and then um, allowed the Iron Islands to have back their own island, and allow them to pick a house which was uh, strong to lead them. And then they decided to pick the uh, the Greyjoys, and that's pretty much how they came about, which I thought was an interesting and cool story. So, how is the war going? Let's have a look. Rob is winning by four percent, which is kind of cool. The nice thing about the Iron Islands as well is we can declare invasion wars. So any war we want, we can pretty much just declare it, which is really nice. So when I want to take territory in a little bit, um, it will be pretty easy to do so. I might go into Reaving though. Um, 
Oh my god, we need to kill him. Like, he's going to end up killing me, which is just not going to be good. Ah, uh, yeah, we do really need to kill him. But his thing is so high. I should have just executed him, but I wanted... I wanted his money, because he had like a hundred and something gold. So yeah, finally, that's, that's really nice. Theon is now in control of the Iron Island, so we're not going to lose it if I die sometime soon or a reaving or something. We do need to find him a wife, like, um, and we're going to try and get a diplomatic marriage with Theon. So hopefully you can marry someone in from Dawn, uh, if they do actually have any children. They don't at the moment. They're actually going to lose, oh, okay, they're related. That's pretty gross. Where's Obey Martel? Is he just in the in the court? Obey, where are you? I don't know where Obey is at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, we have levy reinforcement decrease, which is kind of unfortunate. Oh, yeah, and I also forgot to take this dude off doing what he's doing so he could leave my armies. That was kind of unfortunate. Um, we're going to go ahead and go pillaging in a second. I kind of just want to wait for this to build so we get uh, a bit of a higher levy size. But, yeah, we are going to go pillaging whilst we are still independent. I unfortunately feel like we're going to go back onto the Iron Throne um, in, in a second when the war is finished. However, I am going to go ahead and... Start pillaging the Westerlands and get a shit ton of money. And my wife is pregnant. That's good. Hopefully we have another... Or well, my salt wife is pregnant. Hopefully we do actually get a another son. That would be pretty nice. Um, or we could go on a reaving. That's just like... But we might as well just pillage whilst we can. And then go on reavings later. And we also need to find someone to marry fucking Theon. Whoa, she is some good trades. She's a she's siege commander. That would be really nice to have in my court. Just because she'll make sieges go so much quicker. Sure. She's quick, though, which is kind of nice. She's pregnant, so by the looks of it, that's not too good. Do you have any geniuses? He wants me to stop risking my life. She's 33 as well, which isn't great. I want to marry this person, but she's already pregnant, which is pretty gross. Um, yeah, she's quite good. She's 16, and she has a pretty high, uh, a pretty high entry, which should make me fairly safe. He is no king of mine. Did he win his war? Or what? Is he still fighting his war? He is still fighting his war. And it is 0%. So it's very back and forth, which is kind of cool. Okay, cool. So we are now married. Um, our castle is almost built, giving us a better levy size, which is nice. I will go ahead and build a barracks, maybe? Oh, basic defences, don't really need that. More light infantry. Uh, that's probably better. Let's go ahead and build a patrol post. Oh, the Tully's still in control of Riverrun as well. Let's go ahead and look at that. Um, where even is Riverrun? It's like here. I uh, know, Tommen owns Riverrun now. <laughs> He obviously took it from the Tullys, which is kind of funny. But let's go ahead and levy up our men, and we will prepare. Actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to end the episode here, um, because it's been a, about 40 minutes, and I don't want to make this episode really long, obviously, because it is the first episode. Um, it's going to be a little bit longer, but I still want you guys to enjoy it a little bit more. So, yeah, if you have any advice, it's been a while since i played this mod, so please do go ahead and feel free to comment in the description down below. As well as that, do go ahead and leave this series a like. Uh, it means so much uh, that you guys support this series and it's really, really awesome. And let's just keep on growing as a channel, which will be sick. So yeah, again, as I said, if you enjoyed this, leave a like, uh, comment, um, share this video around, around with all your friends. And I'll see you guys next time. And fish out.